What's up guys? Today I'm going to work on changing the AC compressor on my CRV. In my previous video regarding my AC, you can watch that video here, my compressor had seized up. I attempted to change the clutch thinking that maybe it was just that, but it ended up being that my compressor was completely seized. So I'm going to attempt to replace my compressor. When replacing a compressor, it's also recommended to replace the receiver dryer. Then we're going to pull a vacuum on the system and charge it today. I had also picked up a new condenser because when a compressor seizes, um, they say that sometimes, obviously it seizes, some sort of metal fragments break off inside. Those can sometimes get trapped in the condenser. So when I remove my compressor, we're going to dump out the remaining oil, see if there's any little metal fragments in there. If there is, we're changing this. If there is not, we probably can skip changing this step. I'll decide that when I get to that point. One thing you're going to want to make sure you have is replacement O-rings for any that you may be missing or any that you're changing. The receiver dryer came with its own. I have a ton of extras from AC jobs I've done in the past or parts we've replaced. You can usually buy a kit at your local auto parts store. That way you come across anything you may need to change that may have not been included with anything. Place all those, it's a smart thing to do so. Last thing you want is a leak from a 20, 30 year old O-ring that just all of a sudden bust after using it. A couple things to make the job a little easier. You're gonna need a can tap. You're probably gonna wanna change out the Schrader valves as well. It's smart to do so. We're already accessing the low and high side ports. Might as well just swap those out. $4 at your local auto parts store. Comes with new caps if yours were missing. Showing the can tap, this is just an older one. I just wanted to show it just for reference. It has a point which punctures the can. Most cans now, they're self-sealing and that is to avoid wasting any of it, of course, to the greenhouse gas and affecting the atmosphere as much as possible. So now they have self-sealing cans which have this self-sealing can tap. This is about $9 at your local auto parts store, $13 for both, pick them up. It's gonna be smart to do so and change it at the same time. This shield is a requirement if you are trying to recharge it on your own. If you're attempting to do this on your own, you do need to remove the remaining R134A or Freon or refrigerant from the system, whatever you wanna call it. If you're unsure if it is still charged, easy way to find out is remove the low pressure cap, get a screwdriver, and just push the Schrader valve down really quickly. That lets you know right there, my system is still completely fully charged with the R134A. Now I have it scheduled to be removed, that's where I'm gonna head right now. When taking it to the shop, uh, I spoke to the, the, the customer service guy there, I told him that I'm going to replace the compressor myself and do all the work. It's just that I needed to have it properly pulled. And the reason being is R134A, even though it's non-toxic, it is considered, a, it is a greenhouse gas still, so it's bad for our environment. So trying to be a little bit more conscious about that, and that's why I'm going to have it pulled professionally from a shop. Something new I learned today, I pulled out the Schrader valve from, this is the low port side. Look how much larger it is compared to the ones that were in that kit. So what I'm going to do, if you see, these have an O-ring on them. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace the O-ring with one of the many that I have from the AC kits. And that should take care of the problem. I can go ahead and, re, we'll go ahead and reuse this because the rest of it is metal. It's just that O-ring I think that would cause the issue. The previous video where I changed the compressor clutch, I had to remove all the plastic covering under the front of the CRV. If you need the directions on how to do that, click in the upper right corner, it'll take you to that video. You can get that knocked out and then we can resume back on this video. To hopefully help make the process a little easier, I'm gonna remove the condenser fan. All there is is two 10 millimeter bolts and the, the wiring harness for the fan itself and the AC compressor. The receiver dryer is underneath the power steering reservoir and sandwich between the windshield washer reservoir. I may or may not need to remove the bumper. I'm going to attempt to get the power steering components removed. You can also find out how to do that in the previous video that I mentioned before. It's just two 12 millimeter bolts. 
I may or may not disconnect some of the, the hoses in an effort to get to the receiver dryer, which I'll explain in later part of the video when I'm at that, that point. Removing the bumper is a cinch. One, two, three, four Phillips head screws. You have one here on the side. There's one here at the bottom, which you'll see right here. So you have two on each side, two on this side. Bumper cover comes straight off. We have full access to this and we're gonna need to because receiver dryer is held in by this bracket. It'll just make it so much easier to get to. I had also removed the fan, very easy. So much more room to get to the compressor and I think uh, once we pull it off, we'll just be able to drop it straight down. I'm hoping I don't have to change the condenser, only because I gotta take all these brackets off. I may actually have to drain the coolant so I can remove the radiator and get it out. I'm unsure yet if that needs to be done that way, but we're gonna find out. What I'm gonna work on next, getting all the power steering components removed, 212s, this one, that one underneath to get the power steering pump off of the brackets. More than likely, I'm gonna disconnect the two 10 millimeter lines here, and then disconnect this line from the power steering reservoir because then I can pull off the reservoir with this line and the pump itself. Might be kind of messy, so be prepared with some rags to put underneath there because you're probably gonna lose some power steering fluid. Also be prepared to have more to refill it once we put everything back together. But I wanna get this out of the way. I need to get to those lines and there's nothing I can do about getting the two bolts off the top of the receiver dryer unless this is removed completely. First I removed this power steering line, just kind of propped it up here. For added room, I removed the cruise control unit. There's two 10 millimeter bolts here, and then just one that tightens up, doesn't need to come out all the way. And I just bungee strapped it back, just so it makes it easier for me to access everything here. Then I went ahead and disconnected this line from the reservoir. Now I'm gonna take off the two 12s for the power steering pump. I'm going to remove the belt really quickly. Once you remove the two 12s, the, the tension will be gone. Then I'm just going to pull this whole unit out completely. Now you can see how much easier it will be to access the receiver dryer. And of course, we can now get to the compressor. I'm going to start by removing the two 10 millimeter bolts, which hold the lines to the compressor. And then we're just going to drop the compressor to the ground by removing those four 12 millimeter bolts. They stick in at the corners of it. Get all those removed. Do not tip it over. We do want to see how much oil is still inside of it. And the, the compressor that I bought is actually already, has, it was pre-oiled, so it has a required amount in there. But we don't want to dump it because we want to see if there's any sort of metal flakes in there which determine what we do on our next step when getting to the condenser. I almost jumped over the fact that if you're doing this and following my video, you probably still have your compressor belt attached possibly like if your compressor sees like mine your belt's not on there so down here now that this is all removed you have plenty of room it's a 14 millimeter this is like a big uh bolt that threads in and locks the pulley into place so once you break that loose you can use a, a ratchet you should be have enough room now get that loose and then there's another uh, tensioner here which has a 12 millimeter nut and eight millimeter head, you can back that out and then that actually helps tighten the tensioner when you get the belt on and then this locks it into place. So you can bust both those loose and get your belt removed. There we go. That's how easy that was to get that removed. It really didn't take me a lot of time to get there. Um, when I removed these, I just kind of backed them out. One of them, I think this one, I couldn't get out all the way, it was in the radiator, but you don't need them off all the way. You can just get them to the point where they're no longer attached to the bracket and then remove them with the compressor itself. So let's finish off getting the last part removed. Take off this little 10 millimeter bolt holding the receiver dryer to the bracket. On top, you'll have two 10 millimeter bolts for the lines that feed the receiver dryer. And then we're gonna reuse the sensor which plugs into the receiver dryer, but there's a clip here, you just have to squeeze, pull that from there, and then we can get the receiver dryer pulled out. Now I'm gonna dump some of this 
oil from the compressor into this clean cup. Just want to see what we're looking at. Hopefully there's no sort of metal fragments in there. That uh, way we can just skip a little bit of, of work. Now when I was dumping it out, it's hard to see. There's a lot of bubbles. I'm use a screwdriver, see if I can't find anything inside of this fluid. You know what, look, yep, look right there. I can see it already. That one, I don't know if it's dirt. This one looks like a big metal piece. It absolutely is. Let me see if I can get it out. Ah, oh, that was dumb. Right here, can you guys see that one? That is a little... It's a little metal fragment and... Oops, it's on my thumb now. This is the reason we wanted to check it. Let me put it right here on my index finger. See that there? So there might be more in there. That one was pretty big, just in itself. Um, this one doesn't, looks like it's just dirt. It might have fallen off the compressor itself. So I don't really see a lot. These other ones, see right here, there's a couple. Yeah, these are all little metal fragments right there. Those are even smaller sized. Okay. Here's our little metal flake. That's the largest one I could find. What happens there, they say, is when the compressor seizes up, obviously something breaks inside and it's where you get a little bit of those metal flakes. And those things can potentially clog up the condenser. So, you know what, I'm already here. It's not much more work. Remove 10 millimeter that connects this line to the receiver dryer. This one, which goes back to the evaporator core. Once you get these removed, it's easy because the condenser is removed that way. We're gonna take off all these brackets for the radiator and the line here, 10 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna see if I can just push this forward. You know, the coolant line might flex with it. Let's see if I can just kind of slide the condenser out and then slide the new one back in. There's a 10 millimeter bolt here and here. This holds this bracket into place which holds the condenser into place. So get that removed. Now we're gonna to try to get it out without removing the radiator. Let's see if we have room. Okay, so I'm gonna get that off. Might as well pull that out. A little easier for me. Oh yeah, it should be plenty of room. It's super, super slim. Sweet. That was not difficult at all, getting this out. It literally took me about five, 10 minutes. Looks like we're gonna need to, re to retain these rubber, these rubber insulators. That way when you put the new one on, We'll slide back in there. I'm gonna get the other one opened. I need to re-verify that it is the same model. I haven't opened the box yet. Then we'll get it reinstalled. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and replace this really quickly, put the isolators on. I'll check if there's O-rings here. If not, I'll get some out of my replacement ones and I will change the old ones that are on here. I pulled the O-ring off this condenser fitting and I'd set it here next to a new one that I have. And although it seems it's very pliable still, it doesn't seem like it's cracked, we're still gonna replace it regardless. I don't know when it was changed and it's just smart to do so. 
Use some of that oil from that cup, or if you have some new oil, just lube them up a little bit and then put them on and tighten the fittings up. The new condenser is in. One tip, when you're tightening these bolts up against an aluminum component, do not overdo it because you risk damaging the threading when tightening. Of course you want to do them nice and snug, but try not to overdo it, otherwise if you damage that you're going to need to replace that component. It's almost impossible to rethread something that is aluminum, or at least very difficult. Now let's go ahead and get compressor put on, get your four 12 millimeter bolts, hold it up in there, and let's tighten that up. Once you have the compressor bolted up, go ahead and remove the packaging fittings, change out the O-rings on your lines, and reinstall both lines, and then we can put on your belt and tension that appropriately while everything is out of the way. With the compressor finished up, everything is bolted up, O-rings are replaced, I'm gonna get the belt on. To do that, we need to lower the engine and remove the torque mount. I will remove these two 70 millimeter nuts. I also have the engine supported with a two x four between the header and exhaust manifold just to spread the weight evenly with my jack. And then with the torque mount, there is two 17 millimeter bolts on the, I'm sorry, two 14 millimeter bolts on the side. If you remove those, once you lower it, it should all come together. I don't believe you'll have to remove this nut. Let me get there and I'll let you know. Getting the belt on didn't require me to move that nut for the torque mount. So I would just slide it up in there once it was low. The engine was lowered enough. I talked about this nut which helps tighten the pulley. It's actually a, a 12 millimeter. And this one was a seven millimeter. I'll update it with little captions in the front of the video and a 12 millimeter nut. But I got that on there and tensioned it correctly. Next, we're gonna get this switch transferred over to the new receiver dryer. This is a 27 millimeter socket. You'll need to get that off. And then we're using the supplied O-rings. Of course, we're gonna change out all those on the receiver dryer and then let's get it reinstalled back into the vehicle. When getting the receiver dryer ready, I was changing the lines. These are the O-rings that were supplied with the receiver dryer. This is the size of the one that was on there, so it looks too big. And luckily, I have that kit, which does give me the correct sizes, so it's great to have uh, and be prepared all these extra O-rings when you're doing this job. Once you get that bolted up, you have now closed off the AC system. So before I install everything else, I'm going to, to va use my vacuum pump and vac the system and just make sure it holds. While I put some more things back together, like while it's doing that, I can put my bumper back on. I can probably get some of these power steering components in there, at least the, the cruise control. Still need access to this when I remove it, but with the power steering on, I might be able to get it. Put the fan on. But that's what I'm going to do next, and I want to make sure that the system holds vac. While reinstalling everything, I'm still vacuuming the system. I noticed something that obviously was an error. The plug coming off the compressor is exactly the same as the plug on my harness. So I don't know if they completely botched that, but I'm just gonna use, I cut the plug off the old compressor. I'm gonna cut that one, splice it in, that way I can still use the original connection. Kind of inconvenient, especially when I didn't notice in here, but there's still a lot of slack and I can cut it and have a lot of room to work on and get this new one soldered in. So I've been vacuuming it for probably the last 25-30 minutes. Bumpers back on, power steering, cruise control, everything is reinstalled. I did that because it's still easy to get to the high pressure side. I have shouldn't have any issues removing that fitting. It's just a little snap fitting. Before I started the video, I closed off both of these, so that way there's uh, no air escaping back out through the pump. 
I'm gonna leave it. So that way, I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna maybe like 20, 30 minutes. Gotta make sure it's holding. I'm gonna go inside and have some lunch. Then as long as it looks okay, when I come back out here, we are going to attempt to uh, add the R134A and see if it's working correctly. Let's hope it is. In the midst of earlier part of the video, you saw me using the blue set. I was trying to vacuum it. Kept having issues, going back and forth. A lot of it you won't see on video, of course. I cut that out just to save time. This, the low pressure port, it doesn't seem to be opening anymore. When I, uh, this is obviously closed position. When you spin it down, it opens it. I noticed there was no difference if I had it open and then plugged it onto the port or closed it. The vac wouldn't get down. We're trying to get down to close to 30. It's like 30 it's an inch HG, which is an inch of mercury, but it wouldn't get anywhere close. Usually if you can get it between like 25 and 30, you're okay. Let you know that you're vacuuming the system appropriately. And what that does, evacuating a system like that, it removes moisture, any of the atmospheric gases that are in there, which are detrimental to using the R134A. So I went, bought a new set from Harbor Freight again, and I've had mine for maybe, I don't know, it's probably been like 10, 12 years I've had this thing. I think 2010-ish I bought it, so it was probably time. I might be able to find new fittings, but I didn't want to mess around with it. I just figured it'd be nice to have all new handles, even the gauges, and if you look right here. So we're getting down to about 26, maybe able to do a little more. I've had it on there only about two or three minutes. But that looks like it should be okay where it's at. So we're gonna let that finish up and check where the pressure is sitting after this. One tip, when you're tightening these up, you only need to do them hand tight. These all have gaskets inside there. Let them do their job. There's no need to grab some pliers and crank them on there. I noticed on my old set, I had to start using the pliers to seem to get these to seal off. So I think the gaskets uh, possibly could have been replaced. I don't know if they make a kit. They seem to be like on there. So I think it was just smart to replace it. That uh, AC manifold set. When I bought this one, it was $50 back in the day. It's $59.99, it went up $10. Still a very useful tool if you intend to use it in the future. And I've used this one, it's gotta be like 10, 15 times in, in the past. So I think it definitely paid for itself. After letting it sit for about 30 minutes, looks like we're holding right around 25, 26 inches of mercury. That should be perfectly fine. So we're gonna leave this one closed off. Whenever filling the system, you will fill only in to the low pressure side. So let's get our can ready. Okay, forgive me if it's a little windy. What I'm gonna do next, I have the can hooked up, punctured it. What we wanna do, is open it up a little bit. That should be good. We want to get some of the remaining atmosphere out of this line once we disconnected it from the vacuum pump. Now our next step, with these still closed, that one's open which is fine because it's now pushing up to here and staying right here. I'm gonna start the car, turn the AC on full blast. We'll come back out here. We're gonna open this up and see how the gauges shift, see if that starts to reintroduce the R134A to the system. See what I was doing there? Just kind of holding it up, shaking it. You can kind of feel the can gets lighter and lighter and it gets cold. So when you're done, Probably a little bit left in. Hopefully you can hear it with the motor running. After one can, we're looking at pressures of about 130 and 28. That's usually a pretty solid. The system says it takes uh, 25 ounces and I only put 12 in so far. Let's look at the dash. See what is coming out. Oh, sweet, yes. Here's a huge indicator that it's working again. Right now, I'm not even driving and it is at like 50 degrees, 48 degrees. 
Oh my goodness, thank God, I can feel it again. I'm just not gonna lie, I'm super excited right now. It's starting to get hot out here in Texas and I'm so glad I got this thing working. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more just to bring these pressures up. Maybe like, gosh, I don't know if I even wanna do that. I might just leave it alone and add more if I need to in a day or so. But I feel like it's only about, here's the temperature. It is only 72 degrees out here today, and that's not that warm compared to what we're gonna face in the summertime, 100, 105 degrees. So that's another reason why it's working so well in this colder temperature, it's not that hot out. Even though the engine is pretty warm. But, you know, I might just leave it for now and charge it accordingly as the temperature rises. I wanna see how it reacts also when I'm driving it for a little bit, but Man, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I am super excited it's working right now. Uh, my compressor obviously broke on me. I was able to change the receiver dryer, condenser, some of the O-rings there. Hope this helped you guys out today. I will update this if I have any updates in the description of the video. Uh, if anything changes and I have to do any of the other modifications to it, maybe replace some other parts but it looks like it's working for now. I will try to update it in about six months also, let you know. Actually, I will update it as the summer comes to a close and if it's still working, and if I've had to add any other additional R134. I don't want to overdo the pressures. You start getting too much when you potentially risk damaging it, and where it's sitting, it looks like it's okay for the pressures. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for tagging along. I'm glad that that's fixed now. Now I can actually put, put some more time into this thing. I have this crazy oil leak from the oil pan, the oil pan, the oil pump, a little gasket in there. So now I'm gonna fix it and try to keep this thing running for at least another season while the AC is working. You guys take care. See you next time.